pour l'après-midi. Je vais essayer d'être rapide. Euh, juste un petit commentaire, comme Marlène l'a dit. Euh, les perspectives, la réflexion sont là, mais euh, il faudra choisir. Euh, soit on, on se laisse faire, soit on adopte des solutions. Et, et, et je pense que c'est la question qu'il faut se poser. Est-ce qu'il y a euh, un gouvernement ou une entité qui décidera quel projet à adapter et à adopter afin de euh, reconstruire Beyrouth euh, La deuxième chose, c'est euh, un justificatif. Alors, je suis le docteur d'hier et... Euh, <rire> Et je, veux, je veux juste euh, euh, clarifier une chose. Je suis, je suis docteur par euh, éducation et ma présence aujourd'hui est parce que je, je représente l'Afrique dans divers, euh, diverses organisations internationales et on est en train de faire un rethinking of uh, the healthcare in Africa. Et euh, peut-être ça peut aider euh, un petit peu à Beyrouth. Euh, dernier commentaire, parce que euh, dans ma... Euh, euh, dans mon intervention, j'utilise le terme de génocide euh, en ce qui concerne euh, le 4 août 2020. Et je suis désolé, mais euh, un génocide, c'est vraiment un, un acte de meurtre euh, intentionnel contre un groupe de personnes. Euh, et c'est aussi, euh, aussi un, euh, un moyen de, de faire euh, ou de pousser les gens à quitter leur pays. Et ce génocide, ça, c'est la définition euh, euh, officielle du terme génocide. Et je pense que depuis le 4 août, euh, 4 août 2020, on est en train de vivre un génocide. So, to start with the uh, redesigning healthcare and rebuilding Beirut, uh, we have to take into consideration a few things. First, the existing and the, the uh, plans for expansion for healthcare facilities that are present in Beirut. Unfortunately, there is a uh, an anarchy in that. Uh, we have to take also in consideration that there is no uh, emergency preparedness plan, and we have witnessed that uh, first with the 4th of, October, uh, 4th of August uh, genocide, and two, we witnessed that during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this uh, pushes us also to complement uh, the thinking with the fact that today healthcare is witnessing a shift there is more uh, attention given to uh, preventive and predictive medicine, not anymore the treating medicine. And I think this is what has just been said in the uh, previous, uh, uh, in the previous uh, intervention uh, when talking about um, healthcare, uh, healthcare at home, which is uh, a famous uh, African uh, saying, um, and we saw it with COVID-19, people prefer to stay at home as much as possible. So who does visit a hospital? Uh, basically everyone, people who are using wheelchairs, people who have impairment, uh, visual impairment or hearing impairment, people who, uh, who have, uh, are complaining of any symptom, children, uh, pregnant women, um, anyone that uh, is complaining whether physically or uh, mentally. Uh, and um, this is why a hospital is that important in a city. And they say that architecture is not about setting up a fancy structure. It is uh, about creating an enabling environment that will allow anyone to experience a barrier-free space, which is the hospital without walls, uh, with dignity, without any obstacle, and with zero or as low as possible dependency level. This is a right rather than a gesture of sympathy. First, uh, when redesigning healthcare, we have to think about a few of the uh, new era uh, factors or criteria. So we have to invest in digital health because it is the major transformation uh, uh, in the future. Innovation is needed to build more reliable, uh, safe, patient-centered experiences. And um, we have to connect healthcare facilities together because that um, that connection, which is a digital connection in, the, in, in this uh, page, it goes beyond the development of new technologies. Um, digital solutions, they provide uh, clinical decision-making um, tools, electronic medical records, and a plethora of access to information. When we talk about innovation, we cannot, talk, we cannot forget talking about research. Uh, research and innovation address healthcare and societal ch challenges. Creating research culture will inevitably foster innovation. And again, 
just like when we are creating uh, uh, some new projects, we may create jobs. Uh, we know that if we can commercialize research, it can create substantial income for healthcare stakeholders, which will help them in facing the economic crisis, for example, that today Lebanon is facing. Also, uh, providing financial incentives for those who develop innovative ideas, which will create a strong motivation for innovation. We also have to focus on collaboration because healthcare systems are facing an increased demand and the rise in inequality uh, in service uh, uh, prov uh, provision. Um, collabor uh, collaborative healthcare is a um, current trend. We see it. Uh, many facilities, they collaborate in between its, each other. And this is why we talk more and more about decentralizing healthcare facilities. For collaborative care to be uh, a driver of healthcare transformation, we need definitely to think about how we design and manage healthcare delivery. Collaboration is a dynamic, complex system of people, of processes, technologies that cannot be managed individually. And we need to develop collaborative competencies that enable us to manage collaboration from a systems perspective. Uh, definitely, uh, redesigning healthcare will entail working together. How we can do that? We can create startup friendly environment. Looking only inward is a mistake. And I think this is what we have been doing for the past two days. We're, we're not looking only at the site that has been devastated, but we're looking at, at it from a larger perspective. Innovation can only flourish by developing concepts from inside and outside the system. Healthcare startup, community, and culture of innovation can offer the potential to revolutionize uh, future patient care. And healthcare startups need to be nurtured and address issues of regulation, intellectual property, funding, scalability, and procurement. Obviously, healthcare uh, systems are often approached by entrepreneurs with innovative ideas who require the clinical direction and data to launch their innovation. And I think this is a, a place where youth can play a major role, uh, especially with encouraging them uh, in uh, uh, setting up new startup companies. In order to establish innovation uh, facility, uh, in a facility, um, well, we definitely have first to set up a physical space to bring people, resources, ideas together to change healthcare. Proximity will create an environment where the innovation process accelerates, and uh, we have to create a space where startups, strategic partners, large corporations, stakeholders can share data and information to help develop new products and ideas and stimulate investment opportunities. And I think this is the role that the government has to play, bringing in the stakeholders together, because we may, ha we may have each one of us an idea, but then we have to mix them in order to come up with a solution for the city. Sustainability, everyone talks about this. Um, it, it is, I think, the word of the, of the decade, and it is key in implementing innovation. It is primordial while bringing uh, innovative technology-driven facilities to consider patients and relatives' experiences within and outside the facilities, especially that with the coming years, I think there will be more and more focus on visitors within the facility. They will have to use the outside of a healthcare facility. And such thinking will lead to an inclusive, eco-friendly, and sustainable implementation of healthcare facilities. So first, our facilities, they have to be accessible. And with accessibility, we're talking about sensory accessibility. Uh, we're talking about horizontal accessibility and vertical accessibility. But we, are, we also have to focus on an absorbing outside environment that will cover not only the obstacles, uh, or pathways, ramps, um, parking, and pedestrian crossings, but also connected streets, uh, street furniture, street signage, and nearby children daycare and playground. Some people may ask why we're focusing about children playground and and daycares? Well, it's only because we have to also provide a, an environment that will allow the uh, employees to stay within these facilities. Uh, and this is what uh, we call the brain gain and the brain retention um, that today, unfortunately, um, we are facing completely the opposite in Lebanon with the, with the brain drain. Um, it, the sustainability will enhance operational efficiency and address increasing financial and regulatory pressures. Um, unfortunately, if some of the measures were taken in the past, hospitals wouldn't be suffering of what they are partially suffering today. Applying sustainable policies complements the applicable code of ethics, fosters uh, public health by achieving more resilient and healthy communities. Among the benefits of a sustainable healthcare sector, lower operational cost, image improvement, 
We always talk about uh, Lebanon being the hospital of the Middle East. Uh, we hope that we will regain that, uh, that uh, image uh, in the future, especially that it is um, by, by all means the Lebanese doctors who are making other cities the uh, healthcare cities in the world. Social overall trust, climate change fighting, and renewed certification such as LEED. And when we talk about LEED, obviously we talk about alternative energy. Applying a better design and uh, construction, energy scaling alterations to existing facilities, and upfront investment in renewable energy, some of the below and alternatives that I will mention may reduce significantly the operational cost, allowing future financial savings and long-term environmental benefits. Among these, for example, the illumination arrangements, um, such as the use of LED uh, lightings, natural lighting through larger windows or glass facades, um, motion sensors. We can also um, improve the insulation and the ventilation within the uh, healthcare facilities, rely on solar energy, um, and that means that we will have to use uh, smartly the space that is available. Uh, zero air uh, leakage policy, airflow management, especially in heavy duty places or corridors. Um, and we can just use simple tools. I'm not talking about a huge investment such as access controls or a, a better sealing of windows and doors. And um, we also have to take care of the landscaping. It has been mentioned a lot, the green uh, um, um, areas, whether on balconies, terraces, and uh, on the streets. Well, in healthcare facilities also, we can use the plants uh, to create a, a natural aeration of the uh, space indoors, and outdoors we can rely on trees. Two, we have to focus on eco-friendly transportation because a redesign of the transportation systems uh, reviewed by local partners, municipalities, regulatory bodies will participate in reducing significantly transportation emissions. Such as Sylvia has mentioned, for example, the tramway. Um, in that way, we can promote public transport and probably get rid of some of the uh, uh, fuel mafia in, in, in Lebanon. Eco-driving training for ambulance drivers. Uh, there is a great example of uh, that which was done in uh, Sweden. Uh, you can read about it. Very interesting. And we can also um, provide some staff incentives uh, in case of usage of uh, electric car or du dual cars. Waste management uh, is also part of uh, rethinking um, a sustainable healthcare uh, sector because an improper disposal of medical waste will uh, is at the, at the moment and will remain a uh, major challenge in developing countries mainly. Um, and to address the latter, we can take very few simple steps. For example, we can implement a document uh, destruction service department, and this will also generate money because we sell the destructed paper to companies that do uh, recycling. We can do a proper separation, segregation of waste, procurement of green certified cleaning products, um, partnering with local waste facilities and recycling entities, and we can also implement new policies for autoclaving and thermal disinfection and sanitation. Uh, water management should also be part of what we what we take into consideration because conserving water will reduce water bills and sewer uh, usage. Um, it also lowers the energy costs rising from water heaters, HVAC systems, refrigeration. Water management boosts efforts in resilient and healthy communities creation. For example, we can um, just have a continuous routine pipes and fixture ma maintenance, um, low flow toilet, shower, head showers, uh, faucets. Um, we can implement smart HVAC refrigeration systems or upgrade the existing ones. Uh, um, we can make a, um, um, a rainwater harvesting um, in order to collect the rainwater and or any wasted uh, water, and this can be part of the landscaping. Um, and uh, we can also upgrade our water treatment plants. And um, just to give a very quick example, the rainwater uh, harvesting wasted um, uh, water, we, we use that technique in one of our uh, uh, manufacturing company, not, not nothing to re related to healthcare. And, and trust me, that water was being able to uh, provide the water for all the toilets and for, uh, for all the landscaping in the compound that was uh, uh, um, uh, occupied by more than 40 tenants. Healthy, resilient communities um, 
the, the goal of redesigning cities is definitely to achieve proper public health and resilience among the general population. Um, sad, horrific, uh, unbearable events uh, can always be turned into opportunities. Uh, we can also take advantage of, uh, uh, sadly I'm saying this, but we can take advantage of uh, the genocide of the 4th of August. I have witnessed myself that uh, I, I was there, contrary to what was uh, said yesterday. I was in, in Lebanon. and. If we really want to close that circle of resilience and healthy communities, um, we must not only treat the ill, uh, we must uh, not only provide a cure uh, or care, but we also have to enhance the environmental well-being. Um, that needs executive visionary leadership. Uh, it requires government support. Uh, it requires us believing in youth, in talents, and empowering them. Um, there is no stupid idea. Um, and um, this is what is key in redesigning healthcare in, um, in cities. That was it. Thank you.